Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to give you my top tips on how to improve your pet portraits using pastels. I am Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. If you want to follow along with a real time step by step tutorial of this cavalier where I talk you through every step of the process, I have this tutorial available over on Patreon so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. My first tip is to use a reference photo. And this may sound obvious to some of you guys, but it's really important if you're trying to draw something realistically. And not only working from a reference photo, but also choosing a good reference photo. You wanna make sure that when you're looking for a reference photo, you choose one that has good contrast. So one where the highlights and the shadows are very well defined. So that way the shapes and the curls in the fur and the clumps of fur are well defined. Because if you get one, that doesn't have a lot of difference between the highlights and the shadows it's not going to look 3d it's just going to look a little bit flat especially if you've got an area that has just sort of one color in that area if there's no shadows or highlights in the photo then it's just going to look like a big block of color in that area so make sure that you choose a photo where you can clearly see the highlight areas and the shadow areas also make sure that you're choosing a photo that is clear so when you zoom in you should be able to see some of those fur details. You really want to avoid working from photos where it was taken from across the room or the dog is really blurry because if you can't see the direction of the fur or any of the fur details you may end up making it up and it can be quite hard to make up fur detail that looks realistic especially if you're just starting out or you haven't drawn many dogs in the past or that specific breed. So choosing a photo that has all of that fur detail where you can see the fur direction and everything like that is quite important as well. And on that note, you want to make sure that you can see the detail in areas like the eyes and the nose, especially on pet portraits. You're really trying to capture that specific animal and you want to try and portray that personality in that specific dog. And a good way to do that is to make sure that you could really clearly see the eyes so you can copy that into your own drawing. Sometimes I will make up fur detail on pet portraits because I have quite a lot of experience with that. But one thing that I will never do on a specific pet portrait is make up the eyes. I will either use another reference photo where I can see the eyes clearly or choose the reference photo to start with where you can see the eyes very clearly because that's very important. And another thing to avoid when choosing a photo is any sort of odd angles. Like for instance in this picture of a cat the feet are sort of folded underneath the cat and it looks fine in the photo because we accept that as true because it's a photo. But when you translate that to artwork sometimes it can look a little odd it kind of looks like the artist did something wrong whereas we know that we're just copying that photo but because it's an odd angle it can come across differently in artwork so I try and avoid things like that or angles where you're looking directly down onto the animal like when you've taken the photo from above the dog that can look a little odd sometimes as well because it sort of distorts the proportions of the body it makes the head look huge and sometimes that can look a little odd in artwork as well in general taking the photo at eye level to the dog is a little bit more flattering and there are exceptions to all of these tips. Like I've drawn dogs with the photo taken directly down on top of the dog and drawn some weird angles and that kind of thing. So there are exceptions, but in general, these tips will really help you out, especially if you're just starting out and you're not sure what is a good reference photo. Because honestly, the better the photo is that you have to work from, the better your artwork is going to look in general. Another tip that I personally like is to work in layers rather than sections. And this is a very personal choice, whether you work in layers or sections. And I know that there are a lot of artists on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or wherever that create their artwork in sections. So they'll start with the eye and then they'll complete that fully and then they'll move on to another area and complete that fully. And it does look really nice when you're posting progress shots or you're doing tutorials or something like that. But in reality, for some people, that's not the best way to work. So I just wanted to quickly go through some of the reasons why I choose to work in layers over the entire piece rather than little sections at a time. For me, I forget what colors I've used, how much of that color, and in what order I did those colors in in the section that I just completed if I work in sections. So when I go to do the next section, it doesn't really match up and it doesn't really look cohesive. Whereas working in layers allows you to add that color to the entire dog or the entire area that you're working on before moving 
moving on to the next color so you don't have to remember what color you laid down because it doesn't matter you've already done that layer. I also find that it's easier to judge how dark or how light each area is in comparison to other areas so it's easier to fix or adjust things. So for instance if you complete an area like the ear for example if you complete it fully and then you move on to the area around the eye and then you realize that some parts of the ear weren't light enough or dark enough and then you have to go back and adjust that ear after you've completed it and the issue with doing that especially with pastels is that you can fill up the tooth of the paper quite quickly with pastel meaning that you won't be able to add as many layers as you can with other mediums so if you have to go back and adjust things you may find that you may not be able to do that whereas when you work in layers you can adjust how dark or how light things are against each other as you build up your layers. So with my layering process I usually focus on creating a base layer which is a slightly darker version of the mid-tone color and then I start adding textures and getting the values right in the next couple of layers and then I add more details towards the end. And I know that a lot of people struggle to work on the entire piece as a whole because it's kind of overwhelming and they prefer to work in sections because of that reason. So if you're struggling with where to start if you're going to work in layers a good tip is to actually just pick a color that you see in your reference photo. So sometimes I start with a really dark color like the dark part of the eyes and I'll pick a color like a really dark blue and I'll go into the eye where I see that really dark blue and then while I've got that pencil in my hand I'll go to another area of the piece where I can see that dark color like the nose or the mouth or something like that and then once I'm finished with that color I'll choose another color that I can see in my reference photo and then add that to that section where I saw it and then again while I've got that color bring that over the rest of the piece as well so if you are struggling to work in layers because it seems a little bit overwhelming sometimes thinking about it like that just pick a color start with that and apply that anywhere that you see that color that can make it a little bit easier to get started but again that's a very personal choice whether you want to work in layers or sections but I just wanted to let you know some of the reasons why I choose to work in layers in case you're feeling pressured to work in sections like you see all those really beautiful progress pictures on social media you don't actually have to work like that if you don't want to or if you find it too difficult or your work isn't looking as cohesive as you want it to you can try working in layers instead my next tip is to make sure that you start with an accurate outline so whatever method you use to get your outline down whether that's transferring tracing projector freehand whatever method you use make sure that you spend as much time as you need to to get it to be as accurate as possible because it's really important when trying to make something look realistic that your base outline is accurate I've seen people rush through the outline because they just want to get started on the drawing but especially if you're working in pastel or like colored pencil or watercolor or anything that's a little bit hard to alter once you've started adding those layers of colors it can be really hard to fix any areas of your outline that weren't accurate to start with so it's not like working with acrylic paint where you can kind of paint over it you want to make sure that you do try and get that outline accurate to start with so that way you don't have to try and fix mistakes later on and by accurate outline I don't necessarily mean a really really detailed outline it's totally up to you how much you want to put into your outline some people find that just doing the basic shapes is enough for them other people like to do the direction of the fur and lots of little details in their outlines so it's totally up to you what kind of outline you do and how intricate that is but make sure that whatever you put down is accurate to start with another good tip is to work on a toned paper so instead of starting with a white paper if you start with a mid-tone gray or brown or just a neutral mid-tone color it means that you can actually work with light colors and dark colors from the start so if you look at your reference and you want to add white in a certain area you can do that straight on the toned paper but the main reason that I like to work on toned paper is because it's easier to get your values right so it's easier to judge how light or how dark you're going when you're working on white paper you may add a color thinking that it's as dark as you need it to be but once you've added in other colors around it you'll realize that the color that you laid down on your white paper wasn't as dark as what you thought it was because of the contrast of that white paper so in this example you can see that the colors on the white side look darker than the colors that are on the black side when in fact they're actually the exact same color so by using a mid-tone color paper you'll be able to more accurately see if your values are right without going too dark or too light by accident because of that illusion of the white paper making your colors look darker than they actually are 
So a tip when you're working on your fur details is to not draw every single strand of fur. You really only need to draw the clumps of fur. So try and think about it as like clumps and clusters rather than strands of fur. Because if you draw every single strand of fur, like you have a pencil stroke for every single strand of fur, unless you're working on a super huge piece of paper, the strands that you're creating with your pencil stroke are actually going to be thicker than the strands of fur in real life. So it's going to look wide wiry and kind of oily looking if you try and get in every single strand with your pencil. Whereas if you try and think about it as clumps and clusters and you focus on where the light parts and the dark parts are, that's going to look more realistic than trying to do every single little strand of fur. If you stand back and look at your artwork from a normal viewing distance, one or two steps away from your artwork and it looks realistic and then that's all that matters. You don't need to have those really tiny little details for it to be realistic. You just need to make sure that you've got your shadows and your highlights right. So just following those general clumps of fur with a little bit of a gist of the fur direction is what's going to make it look realistic. And that being said, you still want to follow the direction of the fur. So you want to make sure that any pencil strokes that you're adding are the same length as the fur that you're trying to recreate and also the same direction. So you don't want to do like short pencil strokes in an area that has really long fur and vice versa. You want to still try and replicate that direction and the length of the fur. My next tip is to choose a paper that allows you to add lots of layers. It's important to be able to have a paper that you can add those layers because fur looks more realistic if you can add the depth and the amount of layers that fur has in real life. So you want to make sure that the paper that you choose can actually allow you to add those multiple layers of fur detail to make it look a little bit more realistic. So my preferred paper is the Claire Fontaine pastel mat because it's still smooth and allows you to have a smooth result if that's what you're after, but it also allows you to add many, many layers. So there are a lot of papers out there labeled as pastel paper, but none of them work the same as the pastel mat. A lot of them end up looking really grainy and they just don't have enough tooth to hold enough layers of pastel. And some of those really textured papers, you still can't add as many layers to anyway. So I haven't really found another paper that is the equivalent to the pastel mat. Before I share my next tip, if you'd like to follow along with my longer real-time tutorials where I talk you through every step of the process, then Patreon might be the solution for you. For a small amount per month, you'll have access to every tutorial that I've previously uploaded on your chosen tier level in a variety of mediums like pastel, colored pencil, graphite, watercolor, and more. You'll also have access to the original reference photo, a traceable outline, and a list of suppliers including the exact color names that I'm using so you really can follow along every step of the way. My tutorials don't skip any stages or cut out important parts of the process and I will share all of my secrets to help you improve. There's no lock-in contract so you can upgrade or downgrade to an alternative tier level or you can cancel your pledge if Patreon isn't right for you. Every month I will upload brand new tutorials to the library so you can grow and develop your drawing and painting skills and take your art to the next level. You can also join in on our members chat group where you can ask questions or advice and share your artwork and talk to other members in the Patreon community. The link is in the description if you want to check it out. So my next tip is to start your first layer by using a slightly darker mid-tone color as your base layer. So the way that I work, as I was saying earlier, is that I work in layers instead of treating it as like a paint by number or something like that. You want to make sure that the layers of pencil strokes are overlapping just like the fur is in real life. So by having your base layer slightly darker, but not as dark as your darkest values, it will allow you to add lighter detail and darker detail on top of that. So rather than going in straight away with the exact color that you need in that area for the end result, you want to just go slightly darker than that. So that way you can add multiple layers of your fur detail in the correct color as you add more layers. I like to use pan pastels as a base for a lot of my pastel paintings because they're easy to use. They have a nice smooth finish and you can control how much pastel you lay down so that way you don't fill up the tooth of the paper too quickly. And the reason why I recommend pan pastels over soft pastels or pastel pencils for the base layer is because you can actually mix any color that you want from five pans. So if you just buy the red, blue, yellow, black and white, you can mix those five colors just 
like paint. So you don't need to go out and buy an entire set of pan pastels to get started using pastel. The pans also contain a lot more pastel than a standard pastel stick and especially more than a pastel pencil, which makes them cost effective in the long run instead of doing the entire piece in pastel pencils or with pastel sticks. You can just save your pastel pencils for the smaller details towards the end. And if you don't know what pan pastels are or you want to know more about them, I'll leave some links to some tutorials that will be useful for you in the description below. My next tip is to make sure that you blend in between each layer. So once I've got a layer of pastel down, I'll come and blend it with a cotton tip or my finger. And the reason that I blend in between each layer, especially at the beginning of the piece, is to really help push that pastel into the paper, which helps you be able to add more layers. So if you don't know what tooth is, I've mentioned it a couple of times in this video, but it's basically the little grooves in your paper. So every paper that you work on has kind of like hills and valleys. And when you apply your pastel it catches on the hills and then deposits into the valleys and once you fill up your valleys so that they're level with the hills you won't be able to add any more pastel because it becomes a, a smooth slick surface so by blending in between each layer you're helping push that pigment into those little valleys of the tooth of the paper so it will allow you to add more layers that way a good tip when you're working on white fur is to not go straight to grey or black for the shadows because you can make the dog look older than it is and it looks quite flat when you do that. And it's the same with black fur as well. You don't just want to use white for the highlights because it can really age that animal. So what I do is I hype up the saturation on my reference photo and I also make colour swatches to clearly see those sort of hidden colours in these highlights and shadow areas in these black and white animals. especially in black and white fur it reflects other colors that are surrounding it so you'll probably notice that there are a lot of blues and purples amongst the white and black fur so you want to try and add those into your shadows and your highlights rather than going straight to gray or white or black it will look more realistic and interesting in the end if you use those other colors like the blues and purples or any other color that you see in the reference photo and not just go straight to gray or white or black I use a lot of vibrant colors in the first few layers and then I use more subtle natural colors in the following layers so it tones down those bright colors but they still show through a little bit in the end. It just makes for a more interesting piece. And another important tip is to make sure that your values are right and I know that I touched on this a little bit earlier but one of the most important things that you can do to make something look realistic is to get your shadows dark enough and your highlights light enough. So if you're not sure if your values are right you can actually just take a picture of your artwork when you're nearly done and turn it into black and white using your phone or a computer and then compare it side by side with your reference photo and turn that into black and white as well and that way you'll be able to see whether your shadows are dark enough and your highlights are light enough without the distraction of the color there. And another thing that I do to compare my artwork to my reference to make sure that it looks accurate is to actually zoom in on specific parts like I'll zoom in on the eyes for example and compare that to that section on the reference photo so that way you're excluding the rest of the piece and you're really just focusing on that small section so you can do that for the nose or the ears or any part of your artwork and it will really help you be able to see whether your colors and details and shadows and highlights and that kind of thing are accurate. Accurate. And my next tip is to help you be able to get those really bright colors or highlights or whiskers towards the end of the piece. Sometimes you'll get to the end of the piece and you really struggle to be able to add in those last few little details. And I found that the best way to be able to get those extra details or highlights or whiskers and things like that is to actually use a softer pastel. So most pastel pencils are on the harder side and by using a softer pastel on top of that, it actually goes on more opaque and vibrant than a lot of the harder pastels. So if you're struggling to use a hard pastel to get those whiskers or highlights, switching to an even softer pastel can actually get you that extra layer to be able to do that. So if you're wanting to get fine details like whiskers, the Caran d'Ache pastel pencils are actually softer than most of the other brands. This means that you'll be able to go on top of the harder pastels a little bit easier. The problem with those pencils is that they're really quite expensive and they crumble really easily because of how soft they are. So I usually only use them when I'm trying to get that extra layer that I couldn't get with my harder pastel pencils. But if you're trying to get a highlight on a slightly larger area, then a good option is to use a pastel stick. And I like to use the Rembrandt just because they're on the softer side in comparison to the pastel pencils, but they're still not as soft as like the Sennelier or Unison or some of those soft pastel sticks. They're a little bit of a harder pastel, so they're still a bit easier to be able to get marks and lines and things like that. 
If you wanted to follow along with a real-time version of this Cavalier where I talk you through every step of the process, then there's a link to my Patreon channel in the description, or there's a playlist on the screen of some other pastel tutorials that I thought you might find useful, so click on that and I'll see you over there.